I'm going to get uh, Dirk now to give a few reflections. I mean, we've been working quite a lot on this agenda, led by Dirk for, for some time now. It would be good to get your thoughts as before we go back into another round of yeah. questions and comments. Well, thank you very much, Alison, and also thank you to Shruti and Kamalaj mm -hmm. for uh, um, introducing this, this topic. Uh, let, let us just first reflect on the rapidly changing agenda of the G20 so that uh, new items can be added quite quickly. Um, although, of course, there's considerable effort behind it. But um, <coughs> like three, four years ago, it was a finance technical group uh, which had responded to sort of an East Asian mm -hmm. uh, uh, financial crisis and uh, was thinking about sort of finance <coughs> technical issues. And then uh, came the financial crisis and something new was added. Uh, sort of a public face was added to the uh, to the G20. And now we're here discussing the G20 uh, development agenda. I think that is that is quite exciting. So it's quite flexible in that sense, so that new things, items can be added uh, um, to, to the agenda. Um, ODI has done a, a, a fair amount of work on uh, the G20 issues. And uh, so last year, we, uh, we did produce something called the Development Charter for the G20, uh, very much arguing that um, uh, that there needs to be sort of a development dimension to what D20 is doing. Um, and just before the Toronto summit, we published um, uh, something on the D20 framework for strong, sustainable and balanced growth and how uh, low-income countries and small and vulnerable economies could fit into this. Now, uh, we need to then think about um, what is the distinguishing feature of the D20 uh, and the development agenda. What is the distinction between, uh, about this? And I think there are at least four issues here. Um, it's different from traditional development agendas because it includes uh, emerging markets, so the BRICS. And that brings with it new opportunities for low-income countries. Um, it also brings with it sort of new responsibilities for emerging markets. Secondly, um, it brings a sort of beyond eight issue uh, to the table, which have we which <coughs> has already discussed. So it's not discussion on reallocations of aid, it's about uh, new issues. Uh, it's about uh, foreign direct investment, it's about trade, it's about sovereign wealth funds, about development finance institutions uh, um, as well. Thirdly, the D20 is a network. It's not a body as such, it's a network of, of countries. Um, so it's not an agency, a development agency as such. And I think that is also something that we need to exploit. It's a network of, of different countries with different views. Uh, of the world. And fourthly, um, it's, it has come to the forefront particularly because it dealt with, uh, with specific urgencies. Um, it were urgent matters that, that had to be dealt with. Um, so that, that is quite important. So I think if, it, when it, if and when it goes to a steering committee of the global economy, then it's a very different matter. Then it's more like an ordinary thing. If, if it is uh, dealing with, with urgencies, then it, it, it can do things uh, quickly. Now, how can the G20 make a difference taking these things into, into account? Um, and I think some of the comments have already been made, but it can think <coughs> about how development is included in the, in the G20 core policies. S secondly, um, the work of the G20 Development Working Group uh, is, of course, relevant for, the, for development. Um, and thirdly, to, um, think about the G20 process. So let us first think about the core issues, the G20 core issues. Um, here we have discussions about uh, sort of banking regulation and global rebalancing. But I think it's very important to just put on the table that all of these issues are not neutral for development. So that um, s some countries are affected particularly by, uh, by changes in, in, in financial, uh, global financial rules uh, more than others. If you rebalance the economy, um, even when it happens, that is good news for some uh, countries, but maybe more challenging news for other countries. I think that needs to be brought to the forefront. Y you might not want to overburden the G20 core issues um, because of development uh, so much, but at least you want to put it to the forefront and to just take uh, uh, get the G20 to, uh, to account for, for this. And some call it's policy coherence for development. Uh, so that at least that is on, uh, put on the table. And we've done uh, some of it already in this publication. So we thought about how banking regulation might affect low-income countries of Africa in particular, how global rebalancing might shift, might imply shift in trade patterns, um, uh, and and how uh, certain countries, uh, particularly African countries, might might have challenges. 
Um, now think about then the development working group, and I think there um, the, the score for G20 is very high. I think it's, it's doing exactly the right things. Um, it, it exploiting its comparative advantage in the in, in the uh, um, in the um, uh, the global setup. So it's thinking about infrastructure financing. Well, that's particularly important. We can is it possible to think about emerging markets to bring them to the table and to, to have their <coughs> sovereign wealth, their foreign direct investment uh, to the table? Is it possible to link that to the increasing opportunities in poor countries such as such as Africa and elsewhere? Uh, where the, these countries are, are growing faster, there are more opportunities for infrastructure financing. Is it possible to, to link the two? Um, is it possible also to think a bit more about uh, sort of development finance institutions and to ensure that they can channel their funds, where it, um, maybe not just grants, but also blended finance, and that the restrictions on blended finance are, are lifted and so that that can reach um, regions and, and regional, uh, regional growth and so on. Uh, secondly, um, I think something that um, uh, where G20 could be very important is to think about knowledge exchange. Um, we, we, we were talking about alternative development models, and um, Korea uh, has had a particular development model, um, China has had a particular development model, um, South Africa has, has development models. There are different development models, and I think it's particularly important to think about how to bring uh, these lessons to the forefront. And uh, to <coughs> it might be to do with, uh, with particular growth policies or social policies or, or low carbon innovation policies, whatever they bring to the table. I think that's that's quite quite important, and it could might well be that G20 could think about some sort of a knowledge exchange. It is a network of countries. It, could it exploit that network function uh, for sort of a knowledge exchange? Um, it could also think about resilience, and I think that's there's an, an interesting item that has been put on the on the agenda and sale, which is about uh, fin uh, financial safety net. I don't know whether we've already mentioned it enough, but I think that's that can be quite important, um, particularly for small and vulnerable economies, uh, is to ensure that um, um, that sort of the donor architecture is set up to respond to shocks. So not just individual shocks, individual facilities for individual shocks, but that, that there's actually some grand scale thinking about this and that. Um, that uh, that particular uh, that, that all shocks are in, in, in principle covered by this, um, um, and further, I think that might also be important to um, to think about business. And maybe we haven't heard enough about that. How to link in the emerging market business into the development agenda? Um, could, could is it possible to link the G20 business um, um, with? Um, uh, with uh, opportunities in, in low-income countries. Um, the C10 that, that you mentioned, Sweetie, uh, also, um, uh, when they met, they emphasized a number of things. But one thing that they mentioned was the uh, initiative on investment in Africa. Uh, and I think that, uh, that <coughs> might, be, might be of importance. So try and link uh, G20 business with, uh, with low-income countries. Maybe not at a sales summit, but at least kickstart a process that you do have uh, uh, that are these, these meetings are taking place, maybe <coughs> uh, after after Seoul. Um, and then finally, about uh, the G20 process issues, um, and I think that's always uh, that, that's about sort of uh, increasing legitimacy. And uh, it is a network. Um, it is not the same as, uh, as say, the European Commission, which has cl clearly defined uh, roles vis-à-vis -vis, um, other actors, um, and so th so uh, with, with business, with civil society. Mm -hmm. And with um, with other countries, so it has an external face, and, and it derives legi legitimacy from that. Um, um, but it's a network, but it also needs to have legitimacy. And I think, therefore, it's, it is important to understand uh, how the formal links are with civil society, but particularly also with business. So we, it would be interesting to see um, how how those links work, uh, and that's something that might might need to evolve over time. And finally, um, because um, and, and that's I think is already. Uh, mentioned by, um, by Street, yeah, I think it's important to think about sort of um, uh, fixed seats at the G20 table, and you mentioned that. Um, it's, it's important because then you get some transparency in the process um, um, that certain countries will always be there, or certain groups of countries will always be there, um, and also because if this chair, which has uh, commendably uh, invited uh, sort of a, a number of non-G20 countries is, is happy with this framework. Maybe the next 
the G20 chair wouldn't, if, it wouldn't, if the UCT wouldn't be happy with that, then <coughs> there would be a problem. So if you institutionalize it now, I think that will be very important. And the more you institutionalize it, uh, to think about how groups are represented in the G20, the better it is, and the sooner the better.